let us look now how the single lab validation approach or the North test approach works in practice. And we will look at that on the example of determination of acryl amide in snacks by liquid chromatography mass spectrometer. Acryl amide is a toxic contaminant sometimes found in foods which are produced by heated processing, for example potato snacks, crisp bread, etc. And since it's a toxic compound and occasionally its content in the snacks can reach quite high levels, its determination in such foods is very important. As I've said previously, in the single lab validation approach, the uncertainty is calculated rather for the procedure, for the analytical method, than for the particular result. And what we will do now, we also will calculate it for the procedure and afterwards apply it to this result. So, the laboratory has found concentration level 998 micrograms per kilogram, and this is our result for which we will eventually assign the uncertainty. Now, for finding the bias and in fact also the reproducibility component of uncertainty, laboratory has two certified reference materials. One of them is potato chips and the other one is crisp bread. And for both of these there are reference values available and in the case of crisp bread this also has been used as a control sample by the laboratory, meaning the laboratory has a sufficient amount of it and it has been analyzed many times over a long time period. And let us see now what are the data of these CRMs and we can see the data here. These are the reference values of acrylamide and these are the expanded uncertainties at K2 level. Let us look now at the data that the laboratory has for these certified reference materials. With crisp spread, a number of determination has been carried out on different days and all these values together lead to the laboratory mean value which can be compared with the certified reference value and therefore used for bias determination. On the other hand, since determination has been carried out during a long time, more than one year, these values also can be used for determining within lab long-term reproducibility or the component accounting for the random effects. So that this certified reference materials can be used for both of these purposes. The other certified reference materials has also been analyzed several times, leading to again this mean value, meaning we can use this value for bias determination. But for within lab long-term reproducibility, we cannot use these results because all the determinations were done during a relatively short time period and only on two different days. Our uncertainty evaluation will proceed according to the roadmap that we have seen already earlier, which is given here. So from one of the CRM analysis, we can get this uncertainty due to the random effects to within lab long-term reproducibility. And secondly, from both of them, we can get the bias value. So both of them give us one single bias value, which thereafter we average. Both of them also have UC ref values, meaning uncertainties of the reference values, which we also average, and then calculate the U bias. And finally, URW and U bias are combined together into combined standard uncertainty estimate. How exactly these calculations are carried out? We will look at the real calculation example with real data using Microsoft Excel. I have prepared here a calculation sheet where I have introduced already several things that we will need to calculate and also I have introduced here the measurement result value. And secondly, 
we have here the sheet where all the data are given, both the reference values and the uncertainties of both of the reference materials, and also all the parallel determinations and the values that the laboratory has obtained. And we will now look at how these data that we have here on this sheet will be used for calculating the measurement uncertainty in this sheet. And we will start with the reproducibility component. As I said, we can use only the first certified reference material for reproducibility evaluation. And the reproducibility will be evaluated simply as the standard deviation of those within lab long-term measurements. So that the URW is actually equal to the standard deviation of the laboratory measurements. And of course we have to put here the units, so it's micrograms per kilogram. Now, in this case, we will be using relative quantities for uncertainty calculation. As we, as we saw in one of the slides previously, if we work at medium or relatively high concentrations, then relative quantities are better than absolute. And these uh, concentrations roughly around 1,000 microgram per kilogram are quite high in terms of acrylamide determination. So that we now need to calculate the relative URW. And this is done by dividing the absolute URW by the average value. And the average value, of course, is this one here. And also, in order to present this value in percentages, it is useful to multiply it by 100. So it's 2.70% relative. And the calculations that I just performed in Microsoft Excel are also presented here in this slide. Let us look now how to find the bias component of measurement uncertainty. And again, I will start with Microsoft Excel. For bias component, we need to do more calculations than for the reproducibility component. First of all, we have two certified reference materials. So we need two reference values here. And we go and get these reference values from the data sheet. So, secondly, we need the measurement uncertainties of those reference values. And the expanded uncertainties at K2 level are also given in this sheet. Most of the time, the measurement uncertainties of the certified values of certified reference materials come as K2 uncertainties. However, for calculating our measurement uncertainty, we will need standard uncertainties. Therefore, both of these we will need to divide by 2. So, so that now we have the standard uncertainties, or to be more exact, the combined standard uncertainties on the reference values, which we can also call as, in fact, UCREF-I. Now, the laboratory result, here we have to use the mean values obtained at our laboratory. And the mean values we get from here. So, so that here we now have all the data in absolute terms. Now, this UC we also need to calculate as relative, because afterwards we will use it in relative terms. And this is done very easily. We divide 
the uncertainty by the value and multiply by 100. And just the same is done here also. So now we can find the bias. And the bias is found as laboratory result minus the reference value. And also here, the laboratory result minus the reference value. And these bias values also now are absolute values, not relative values. But we need to calculate relative values. And for calculating relative bias values, we divide these absolute values by the reference values and multiply by 100. So now we have calculated two bias estimates. And now we can start combining them. And combining goes via the roadmap that we have looked at. And let us take a brief look at it again. So we will first average the bias values themselves using this RMS bias formula. And secondly, we will also average the UC ref values as is seen here. So we do two mean squares averaging operations now. So let us start by RMS bias is equal to SQRT sum of squares of the relative bias values divided by the number of bias estimates. And the number of bias estimates in our case is two. So that we can find very easily and it will also be in percent as it was the case with the and bias values themselves. And now UC ref relative we find in a similar way is square root of sum of squares of these relative values. And again we divide by two because we have two estimates. And eventually we calculate now the U bias relative according to this formula here. Square root of sum of squares of these values and again in percentages. The bias data that we just calculated in Excel are now presented here in this slide. And if we look at these data, we see that the bias, which is composed of two components, the uncertainty of the reference values and the RMS bias, in this case has those components at rather similar levels. So they contribute quite similarly to the bias uncertainty. It's in fact more usual that the RMS bias component is larger than the UC ref, but here the difference is quite small. This means that the laboratory has done quite good job in determining acrylamide in these reference materials. Now, since we have both the reproducibility and the bias component of uncertainty calculated, we can now calculate the combined standard uncertainty and then the expanded uncertainty of the result. 
And again, I will first show this in Microsoft Excel. So, we now have the URW component relative, and we now have the UBIAS component relative. And we are going to combine them using this formula here. So this is our formula for calculating the combined standard uncertainty. And first, this combined standard uncertainty will be calculated in relative terms, because all our calculations will run in relative terms. And again, SQRT square root sum of squares of the bias value and the relative reproducibility. And this, of course, will be in percentage, this uncertainty. Now, if we want to assign this measurement uncertainty to this measurement value, and let's remember, in the Northwest approach, we always assign the uncertainties that we calculate to the measured values. Then all we have to do is to multiply this uncertainty given in percentage by this value here, and then divide by 100. Let's do that. Multiplied by this value and divide by 100. So, 48. And this value now already is in micrograms per kilogram. So, and the expanded uncertainty we can now find easily by multiplying the combined standard uncertainty with the coverage factor, which in our case is 2. Again, this 9.5 is the relative expanded uncertainty. And now the absolute expanded uncertainty we can calculate by multiplying the relative combined standard uncertainty by the same coverage factor 2. And of course, the unit here will again be microgram per kilogram. So, we have now managed to find the uncertainty for our result. This slide now summarizes our measurement uncertainty calculation. We have here the same uncertainties as they were calculated in Microsoft Excel, presented in different ways. And finally, the result presentation is here. Expanded uncertainty, value, unit, coverage factor. And also I have written here norm. It is now worth thinking, can we assume normal distribution here or not? It turns out that if we look at the components of the uncertainty, the way they are found here, we discover that in broad terms, we again have three components which are roughly comparable by their magnitude. Let's see. We see that the UC referral and RMS bias rel, they are both very similar, as I already mentioned previously, but also not too different is the relative reproducibility term. So that since we have three roughly similarly um, important uncertainty sources, we can assume the normal distribution. In fact, when we do measurement uncertainty calculation by the Northwest approach, then even if those components are not so similar, which often happens, then usually still we can assume normal distribution because in fact all of these components in turn come from different kinds of data so that eventually we actually have many different influences and uncertainty sources taken into account because long time periods are used and also several reference materials which all have uncertainties and all laboratory determinations have uncertainties. So Combining all these effects together usually leads to a sufficiently large number of different effects to enable us saying 
that the distribution is roughly normal. So that in the case of the northeast measurement uncertainty calculation, if there are sufficient data available, then usually normal distribution can be assumed.